Okay, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. You all know I'm trying to catch up with Vikings before they drop the second part. Not particularly enjoying the series right now, but we're going to truck it out. We're going we, we, we to truck it out. We're going to truck it out, man. I don't have anything positive to say about this series right now. Um, and I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest because I don't want to be... I can only be me at this point. You know what I'm saying? I can only be me. I can only tell you how I feel about what I'm watching, and that's my reaction to it. As I said, I'm watching it it's because I want to see how they wrap um, Vikings up. Because I usually, if you're, you're that deep into a series, you want to see. Just like how I watched G the Game of Thrones ending, you know what I'm saying? Um, I could have gave up partway through, um, you know what I'm saying, the season, season eight, I, I could have gave up pathway through, but I was like, let me watch the entire thing, see how they wrap things up. And I wasn't happy, you know, I wasn't happy. So, um, but I still want to see how, how they wrap things up with Vikings. What is going to be the ending? There was some stuff that they just did in episode one that I was like, okay, why is this necessary? Why do I need to see this right now? Like, where is this going? Like narrative wise, what are you leading up to? You get what I'm saying? Like, where are you leading this story right now? Like, we got no update on Floki, which really bothered me because I was like, okay, there was no conclusive thing about if he died or not. Um, and then in episode one, you don't give us no update at all. I mean, it would have been nice if there was like an after credit scene to see Floki coming out of the cave. Maybe something of the sort. You know what I'm saying? I hope he don't just show up in Katakat with no explanation. You know, because that's pretty much what we're getting these days with Vikings. It's like, you know, things are just happening. No explanation, no narrative leading up to that, those things. It's just like, okay, now Ivar is with some the Russian Vikings. Now I'm like, okay, bro. You know, so let's see how they do this. <laughs> you know, let's see how they do this. I'm just really disappointed with the, how the writing has just watered down um ever since like midway through um the fifth season it's just like it was still kind of good you know first part of the um season five even though there was some stuff that just didn't make sense but it was still good you get what i'm saying it was still good it didn't diminish all the way down to you know my 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 rating you know until like the second half of the season where I was like, okay, there was a couple of good episodes, but it is what it is. But anyway, some people say they enjoyed it, <laughs> but you know, it is. So let's go watch episode two of season, season six, and I will see you guys for the review. Okay, so Viking season six episode uh, was it episode two, right? It's a pretty cool episode. Pretty cool episode. Way better than probably the last six or seven, <laughs> you know, because I kind of see the direction of where they're going. So Bjorn has made up his mind to go and help King Harold. So okay, that's cool. Um. I think the most interesting storyline that's going on right now is the storyline surrounding Floki, which is I want to know because Floki looks like Lagatha is in danger right now, but Floki is one of the OGs in the story that I really want to know what happened to him. Even though the storyline over there didn't quite make sense, now it's coming back to the main storyline. They're trying to reconnect it to the main storyline, and I'm for that. So that made me happy. Um... What else happened? Um, the situation that's happening with Ivar and Oleg. Is it Oleg? I think it's Oleg. Prince Oleg, right? Um, yeah, I think it's Prince Oleg, right? The situation that's happening with them is very particular. It's still kind of choppy where that story is going because it's kind of like, okay, he has some brothers that he's not so cool with. 
you know what I'm saying? So they kind of trying to use that as a, I don't know if they're using it as a justification for, for Ivar, con, you know, with the contrasting. I don't know if that's what they're trying to do with, with like, oh, you know, two, two people joining together because they got beef with their brothers. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's what they're trying to do. At least that's how I'm seeing it right now as where they're going narrative wise with these two getting together to do things together. So, um, you know, so I like what they're doing. As I said, the story is still kind of choppy. Um, with that storyline, it's still kind of choppy. It's not f flowing for me. It's not flowing. It's just kind of like a bunch of people are just popping up and we don't n really know the reason why they're popping up. You get what I'm saying? Like, why do you need to kill your brothers? Do we need to, you know, why do you need to kill your brothers? Yeah, you might not like them, but the need just to get this kid because he's the true heir to true heir to the throne, right? I get that part. But other than that, like I don't see he he could have just forced his brother's hand to give him the to give him other kid because if you control the kid, it's kind of like a situation in Game of Thrones um with um with Joffrey, right? When Joffrey became king, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was influenced before he became king because you know he would be next in line to be king if King, um, if Robert died. So it was like, is it Robert? Am I saying that right? Am I remembering the, him right? Is it Robert? <laughs> I I may not be remembering that name right, but you we all know you know, um. Joffrey's dad when he died Joffrey became king but he was heavily influenced by his mom and then he started to act it out when he when he became king you get what I'm saying so he was heavily influenced by Cersei so I understand that concept you know what I'm saying the control all, most of Joffrey's beliefs when he became king came from his mom grooming him to be king not necessarily what his dad represented you know um so a lot of his beliefs, yeah, he did a lot of crazy, crazy stuff, you know, um, but, you know what I'm saying, um, he stopped listening, he stopped listening, uh, so I get that concept where they're coming from with that concept in this, um, with Prince Oleg and this, and this kid, but at the same time, as I said, it's still kind of choppy because there's no, there's no flow to the, to the direction of the story right now, there's no flow to it, there's no, there's no order. It's all kind of still kind of jumbled up and kind of all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm saying, you know, I don't believe this dude is a prophet. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? People have dreams that come tr true before. That'll make you a prophet. You get what I'm saying? Like, I've had dreams that, you know what I'm saying? I dreamt that something go going to happen and it happened. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think I was a prophet after that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think he just has a lot of people in different places. Like if you are somebody of influence, you get what I'm saying? You usually do when you, you, you know, especially if you are in royalty or whatever, you got to have people in those nooks and crannies to tell you, you know what I'm saying? Stuff is going down. So he probably knew that, you know what I'm saying? He got, he probably knew that this dude got married, that his brother got married, you know, for, for a good while, just didn't say anything. It was just like, oh, this can be a trump card I could use against him if shit goes down. Because why would he even risk going to this place to go kill his brother, um, you know, in his basically home or whatever. And then, you know what I'm saying? Know that he needs safe passage to get back out. Like, why would he do that if he didn't have a trump card? You get what I'm saying? He probably knew that whatever his name is, he knew dude was going to show up, you know what I'm saying? And give him some sort of ultimatum that you can predict. You know, there's no need to be a prof prophet to plan that out. You get what I'm saying? So he probably knew the dude was going to show up, you know, after he killed his brother. So he's like, oh, I'm going to just use this tactic to get my way out. He had it all planned. You know, that's my opinion on that. 
Um, so Bjorn has decided to go and help King Harold. So we'll see how that play out. Of course, still want to get an update on Floki. As I said before, you know, I didn't like the, I didn't like that Bjorn drag, um, Uber and Torvi back into all the stuff that they want to left, leave behind. And it looks like them two, them dudes that were, um, that follow King Ivar that they branded and, you know, sent away in, in episode one, seems like they're going to go after Lagatha. So that's where that is. Anyways, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I enjoyed this episode more than I enjoyed episode one. This one was pretty cool. It was it was it was well done. They're trying to pick up the pieces. You can see that the writing in the writing, they're trying to put certain things together to make it make sense again. And it's it's probably gonna take them two or three episodes to do that. So I'm gonna give them a chance to do that. You get what I'm saying? I see what they're trying to do from a narrative standpoint and I'm good with that. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Just remember to like, subscribe if you're new, and also leave a comment in the comments. Let me know what you thought when you saw the second episode. You know, when you first saw it, I would appreciate that. See you guys later. Peace.